In this video, we're going to do another example with L'Hopital's rule. So this one is actually going to be a bit of a doozy. It's going to be the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of the quantity 1 over sine of x and then minus 1 over x. So when we do limits algebraically, we always want to try direct substitution first. So as x goes to 0, what's happening with 1 over sine of x? Well, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, let's draw a little quick graph of sine of x here. So sine of x, kind of, sort of, something like that. Kind of, sort of, something like that. Uh, the only thing we really care about is what's happening around 0 here. So as x comes into 0 from the right, okay, where's sine of x going? Sine of x is also going to 0, and it's coming in from the top or the positive side. So here, if we follow this along from the right side, we see that we are approaching 0 right here. y approaches 0. So as x approaches 0 from the positive side, sine of x also approaches 0 from the positive side. So if sine of x approaches 0 from the positive side, then 1 over sine of x approaches 1 over 0 from the positive side like this. And because we approach 0 from the positive side, then 1 over this approaches, uh, approaches plus infinity, okay, uh, or positive infinity. So if we had 1 over 0 approach from the negative side, that would go to negative infinity. But we don't have that. We have positive infinity, which is good. We'll see why soon. So anyway, so far we have this equals positive infinity. Then what happens with the minus 1 over x? Well, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, where does 1 over x go? Well, 1 over x goes to 1 over 0 from the positive side, which, as we know, goes to positive infinity. So x uh, goes to 0 from the positive side, so 1 over x goes to positive infinity. But we have minus 1 over x, so minus 1 over x goes to minus 1 over 0 to the, from the positive side, goes to minus positive infinity, or in other words, just minus infinity. Okay, So this part right here gives us minus infinity. So what we have then is really infinity minus infinity, which makes us sad face because that's an indeterminate form. But really, it makes us happy face because since we have an indeterminate form, that tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now, the downside is we can't directly use L'Hopital's rule because remember, in order to directly use L'Hopital's rule, we have to have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity from direct substitution, which we didn't get. We got infinity minus infinity. But still, this tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule if we first do some algebraic manipulations. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have to do some algebraic manipulations in order to get something that, when evaluated by direct substitution, gives us 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And we're going to do just that now. So let's clear some space to work with here. We'll move our little happy face up here. OK, so oops, limits as x goes to 0 from the positive side of 1 over sine of x. Well, let's go ahead and do this. So what we want to do is get a common denominator. right? Let's go ahead and try that. We'll get a common denominator, see if that works. So take 1 over sine of x, multiply by x over x take 1 over x, multiply by sine of x over sine of x. And what does that give us? Well, that's going to give us, so down here, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Down here, that's going to give us x over x times sine of x. OK, and then what about over here? Over here, we have the, remember this minus sign right here, and then minus 1 over x times sine of x over sine of x gives us just a sine of x on top. And then on the bottom, we have x times sine of x. OK, so all we did here was we took our original expression inside the parentheses, and we got a common denominator. OK, and we're just simplifying now. So that gives us limits as x goes to 0 from the positive side of, if we combine that all into 1, let's actually drop the parentheses. On the top, we have x minus sine of x. And on the bottom, we just have x times sine of x. OK, now. What happens if we do direct substitution on this? Well, if we do direct substitution on this, what are we going to get? Well, on the top, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, where does x go? It goes to 0. Where does sine of x go? It goes to 0. On the bottom, again, x goes to 0. Sine of x goes to 0. So what we have is 0 minus 0 divided by 0 times 0, which equals 0 over 0. And that makes us super happy face, because now we can use L'Hopital's rule directly because we did direct substitution, and we got the indeterminate form 0 divided by 0, which tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule directly. Okay, So let's go ahead and do that now. 
So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule on this guy right here. So be very careful about that. Since we evaluated this by direct substitution and we got 0 over 0, we can use L'Hopital's rule on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side <coughs> of x minus sine of x over x times sine of x. Now if we use L'Hopital's rule, remember that says take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. Don't do the quotient rule. Okay. So this equals the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of, if we take the derivative of the top, what do we get? Well, the derivative of x is 1, then minus sine of x, the derivative there is minus cosine of x. On the bottom, we have to do a, a product rule. Okay, that's not too bad, though. So if we have x times the sine of x, product rule says derivative of the first. Okay, if you want to take the derivative of this whole thing here, then that's going to be the derivative of the first, which is 1, multiplied by the second guy, which is sine of x, and then plus the first guy, which is x, multiplied by the derivative of the second guy. So the second guy is sine of x, so its derivative is cosine of x. Okay. Now, we could simplify a little bit. We don't really have to, though. I mean, let's go ahead and uh, let's not do that. So let's try a direct substitution again. What happens if we try direct substitution again? Well, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, where does 1 go? It goes to 1. Where does cosine of x go? It goes to cosine of 0, which is 1. 1 times sine of x goes to where? Well, as x goes to 0, sine of x goes to 0, so that's 1 times 0. And what happens here? As x goes to 0, well, x goes to 0, so plus 0, times cosine of 0, which is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. On the bottom, we have 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is still 0, so we just have 0 on the bottom. So again, we got 0 divided by 0, which makes us sort of happy face because that tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule again. Now, we didn't get a numeric answer. Okay, we're not really pleased yet because we didn't get an answer, a final answer. But this tells us, hey, let's go ahead and try L'Hopital's rule again, and let's see if we get something from that. Okay, so running out of space a little bit, so let's go ahead and get rid of happy face number one and that guy up there. And actually, let's get rid of a little bit over here. Well, no, we'll keep this, get rid of this. I need more room in general here. Okay, so changing colors. Now let's go ahead and see what happens if we do limit as x goes to 0 from the right of... So now we're going to take this guy, since we just evaluated this by direct substitution and we got 0 over 0, that tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule on this right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So 1 minus cosine x on top and then on the bottom we have sine of x plus x cosine of x. Okay, so we're just simplifying this uh, ever so slightly. Now, if we use L'Hopital's rule, again, derivative of the top and the bottom separately. So on the top, what are we going to have? Well, on the top, we have 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. And then minus cosine of x. Well, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So the derivative of negative cosine of x is positive sine of x. So this becomes a positive sine of x. Okay. Now what happens on the bottom? Well, sine of x, the derivative of that is cosine of x. And then we have plus x cosine of x. So we have another product rule. Okay, So let's come down here and work on that. So x cosine of x, well, uh, that just says, well, we can actually do that up here. So the product rule says derivative of the first is going to give us the derivative of the first, which is 1, multiplied by the second guy, which is cosine of x, and then plus the first guy, which is x, multiply by the derivative of the second guy. Second guy is cosine of x, so its derivative is minus sine of x. And I'm totally running out of room here. So let's go ahead and shorten some of this. Sorry about that. So that's going to be, rewriting that, that's cosine of x from the sine of x, and then plus 1 times cosine of x plus x times negative sine of x. Okay. Okay, so let's simplify that just uh, ever so slightly. And when we simplify that, what do we get? We get this equals the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of, on the top we have sine of x, and on the bottom we have cosine of x, plus another cosine of x, so really 2 cosine of x, and then minus, because we have plus x times negative sine of x, so that becomes minus x sine x. So now let's go ahead and try direct substitution on that again. And let's get rid of this creepy face here. So if we do direct substitution on that, what do we get? Well, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, sine of x goes to 0. 
on the bottom we have 2 times cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then here, what happens here? Minus 0. x goes to 0. Sine of x also goes to 0. So that's 0 divided by 2 minus 0 times 0, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. And that's our final answer, 0. So that's great. We ended up with an answer here. So just like in another example we did before, uh, we had to use L'Hopital's rule twice. And this was a little more complicated because we uh, originally had the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity. Okay, oops, infinity minus infinity. So that tells us we can do an algebraic manipulation, which is what we did here. We got a common denominator, okay? And then we can use L'Hopital's rule if that works out. So uh, our final answer then is limit as x goes to zero from the positive side of one over sine of x minus one over x equals zero. And we found that by using L'Hopital's rule twice in a row after doing some algebraic manipulations. So more examples of L'Hopital's rule coming up in later videos.